officer of the Tobacco Institute of Australia, the managing director of Philip Morris Australia, Bill Webb. On the other side is Nigel Gray, director of the Victorian Anti-Cancer Council, and Ruth Sheehan, who is director of the Australian Council on Smoking and Health. Nigel Gray, what's wrong with these publications, Tobacco in Australia and the accompanying leaflets that go with it? Well, I think that the science referred to them in them as claptrap, and I think that means that they're misleading, and I think that they're an attempt to expand the market and to recruit people, particularly children. Do you see it, uh, Ruth Sheehan, as a strategy to get children to smoke? I certainly do. We know that children spend more than 23 million on cigarettes every year to send this sort of stuff to schools, either through principals or whatever, is recruiting for the child market, which, of course, once you've got them hooked as kids, you have them hooked as for life. John Dollison, reply to that. Well, I think uh, it's a pretty naive view of both Nigel and Ruth Sheehan to suggest that. We all know from the research that's been undertaken why children smoke, and it's not to, to do with leaflets of that nature or indeed advertising. But why are you uh, publishing them in that case? Because there's a demand for that sort of information. There are many teachers out there, there are many universities, there are many students who want to know a little bit about the background of tobacco. It is, after all, part of our history. It's been part of our history for some 500 years, and people want to know about that. And in fact, that approach of, of sending material to school, either via the principal or via the student, has been uh, applauded by every health education department around Australia. And yeah. It's a very, very sensitive uh, area. We're aware of that. And as I say, we've been applauded for the, uh, the way we go about it. I find it remarkable way. to say that you've been applauded by this because every health education department within the country has condemned cigarette smoking as the single biggest cause of death and disease in Australia. We're talking about a series of leaflets that are going to school. I think you ought to be uh, aware of the correspondence that have come from education and health departments around Australia. Well, can I, can I quote to you from some... Can some, some of that? Just a moment. Can I quote to you from some correspondence that has come from the Director General of Education in Western Australia? Referring specifically to this material, he says... The material appears to foster a pro-smoking outlook, ultimately to influence the free choice of individual adolescents concerning smoking. I cannot accept that the smoking and health controversy is as equivocal as your material would indicate. It belittles the evidence for those least practised in judging such things for themselves. How well, is that applause? Firstly, let me say, let's put Western Australia into perspective. The, the you mean Western Australia than the other ones? Most certainly. Uh, in fact, in 1982 and but indeed you said in 1983... It's been applauded by all states. I think uh, that comment is still relevant. I think we need to look at Western Australia and put it into perspective. I, uh, it's a pity that uh, I haven't had the opportunity to provide to you, as Ruth has, the relevant material from the South Australian uh, Education Minister and Health Minister and indeed others uh, in other states. Bill Webb, do you acknowledge that this is in any way part of a campaign to get young people to smoke? Well, the industry policy is not to try to market towards children. In fact, our, our marketing programs are directed at, adult, at the adult population and our marketing programs are generally aimed at brand switching exercises rather than, as Dr. Gray has suggested, expanding the, the market. And uh, we in no way, we participate in the program through the retail stores to try to prohibit the sale of cigarettes to minors. You, you, you say that the science in this is clapped up. What do you mean? They suggest that smoking isn't a health hazard. They believe and they say that it's not proved that smoking causes I any you diseases. Jump at the conclusions there, Nigel. We well, don't say it's not a health hazard. We say we don't know what the cause of these diseases are in mankind. And you, yes. you must admit the Nobel Prize has not been awarded to you or to Ruth for identifying the cause of cancer. The fact of the matter is we don't know what causes cancer, we don't know what causes heart disease. The what general. we do know is there are some statistics, and statistics require research, and that's exactly what we're doing. We're contributing to legitimate research, in fact $4 million over the last decade through the Australian Tobacco Research Foundation, to find out what the cause of these diseases are. Now it may well be that tobacco has some factor or some component in it uh, that is harmful to health. The sooner we know that, the sooner we can remove it and get on with our business. And uh, just getting back to a point that Nigel made, in fact, if the, uh, the case is, is proven, as he suggests, why is it that when the matter's been taken through uh, US courts, some 160 times has there never, ever been an out-of-court settlement or a case awarded against the tobacco industry? Can you if pick, the can facts you... are clear, it's been why take... is that the case? It's, the facts are clear. There's a warning on your packet which says that the facts are clear and it's been taken through... An, uh, yes because the facts are clear, 1970. Well, it's not a fact. It's, it's uh, not a fact. It is a fact. How do you live with, with producing a packet that contains something, contains uh, information which you patently disagree with? Well, I guess you've got to, you've got to uh, make compromises in any market. Uh, the fact of the matter is the thing was legislated against us. I think there are many products on the Australian market that have uh, certain concerns expressed by the likes of Nigel Gray. And so that sort of hypocrisy and, uh, is okay with you? You have to wear it because it's part of the legislation? Well, it's enforced upon us. It's There's nothing we can do to get around it. But you do exactly attempt the same to change way that. The ABC has to adhere to the Broadcasting and Television Act. Now, you might not like that, but you obviously live within the Act. 
You don't run out and breach it if you don't like it. But you don't attempt to live with community norms. You try to change the norms in Western Australia recently. You spent a very large amount of money trying to change voting patterns so that there wouldn't be a ban on promotion of cigarettes in Western Australia. Now, that's a legitimate you can't right, say that you it? live by the norms and that you don't try to change them because you do try to well, change Well, the norm them. in our society is the right to free speech. Now, one thing we did in Western Australia was to go to the public and say, hey, there's a group of legislators out there who want to restrict your right to product information. What about the freedom that kids are entitled to have from misinformation? And I can tell you. Well, you're a greater, you're your a greater contributor to that than us. You know, the, the emotional anti smoking campaigns around Sydney in particular suggesting that smoking makes your legs fall off. I'd be very, very, happy. very emotional campaigns of that nature, I think, uh, is a greater contributor to misinformation. And in fact, we had a situation recently where we had a, an elderly couple writing in saying, where do I get my lungs drained? You know, I've been smoking for 30 years, and according to this advertisement, I've got beakers full of, of tar. How in my do you ask that criticism that your, 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 your campaign is emotional, that it's overstated and that it's misrepresented? It's very difficult to overstate a campaign that's directed at doing something about the deaths okay. associated with tobacco because it is such a very large problem. They can see, they can test that it's no problem. I well, that's say not quite it's just a moment. Just a moment. Really believe it is a very substantial problem. It's the most important cause of avoidable death in this society today. Cause or association? Use cause. You used association. I use now. cause changing. quite okay. happily. I use cause all the time. I'll very happily let the viewers judge on this. Uh, who they believe, you or me. Sure. And it is on the packet. It is a health hazard. It does cause lung cancer. It does cause heart disease. Isn't this the difficulty, though, that in, pr in presenting the arguments in the way that we have, the community has to make a choice between you and you? You have a vested interest in representing an industry which makes a profit out of selling a product which is argued to be dangerous to people's health. You don't have that vested interest. No, I don't. And there is controlling the smoking de epidemic. You know it's the World Health Organization's product, and that tells us what sort of a health hazard it is. And you're saying that there are no facts in that. And I'm I think not that's saying there are no wrong. facts. I'm saying we don't know. Do you know what causes cancer? Do you um, know what causes heart disease? If you don't know yes, what, I do. if you don't know the facts of the matter, how then do you live with your conscience in promoting a, a, a substance which may be detrimental to people's health? Well, well, I we think we there are the many, many products on the market that may be detrimental to yes, people's health. Yes, I'm asking health, you to account for the way that. you promote yours. Well, I have no concern about that. I believe that people have a right to live a life the way they wish to live. Now, I think it's quite important that Nigel Adults. and Ruth have their opportunity to assess the, the relevant information and make a decision based on the facts. The medical but that's history where it starts goes and that's back, where it stops. If, yes, if we look at medical history, we haven't always know, known the precise mechanisms that have caused disease before diseases have been acted upon. Cholera is a, a perfect example what here. What about tuberculosis, it's which people, was supposed to be associated me, with tobacco? People were dying of cholera, the mechanisms of it weren't fully understood. However, people intervened and managed to wipe out a major killer. Now, if we wait for many years to provide the sort of evidence that you would accept, and frankly, I don't believe that you're going to accept in any evidence condemning ever. cigarette smoking ever, you've got too much money to lose, then uh, we're going to lose 16,000 people every year. And along the line, we lose our 12-year-olds smoking every year. We lose our, our women and uh, their, their miscarriage problems, which result from smoking. Oh, Webb, can, I, can I put a question to Bill Webb? You, you, you're, after all, managing director of mm -hmm. Philip Morris. Where's your new market coming from? You have men who are stopping smoking at the moment. Where are you going to go for new smokers? Presumably you don't propose, really, to shut down your industry? No, with the, uh, the volume of cigarette sales are, in fact, uh, after some decline with the recent excessive tax burdens that have that have uh, been imposed on the industry the the industry volume is starting to show definite signs of recovery and that's a pattern that's been established in australia over the last 10 years or so we've had excessive burdens of taxation and then uh, then the sales decline period uh, for a temporary period and then recover it's children buying cigarettes presumably it's not necessarily children we have already said to you that we do not market to children how do you and know they're immune to the marketing you do, do we, you are we, marketing? We, we take positive steps to try to avoid the sale of cigarettes to minors. Why do we have already been football? responsible, as we have just said, to the distribution of, uh, of Microscopic signs for, for, notices. for putting in retail stores. I'm not aware of any signs being made by you. But it, uh, I mean, it just seems to be a contradiction, in, a contradiction in terms that you're concerned not to advertise to young people when they are your potential replacement market in an industry where you acknowledge there's been When they become adults... Uh, when, when do they become adults, so far as you're concerned? When they reach the age of 18. So you're not interested in targeting them one moment before they turn 18? Well, our, uh, our self-regulatory self code for advertising 
prohibits the use of models under the age of 25. And, and yet, yet and the highest smoking rates are between 16 and 24 year old women, where we have 43% of the population smoking. Now it seems to me I an would anomaly. Contest those statistics. It, it the, seems uh, an anomaly uh, that we have marketing definitely not to that group, and yet that is the group that is the group that's smoking. Sure, I think it's an important the highest, point. Highest, Mr. Highest, just a moment, the please. highest incidence of smoking is not in that age bracket. I'm not sure where, where you it? get your figures. It's 25 this to 35, national and it survey. is not with young women. Well, wh where do you get your figures from? Well, through industry sta uh, sales, retail, recording retail sales, and through the Nielsen audits. Recording re retail uh, and sales. It seems to me that the prevalent surveys done by the medical profession uh, have a little more validity than retail sales recorded by tobacconists. Nigel Gray, you've worked on surveys of this kind? We use Gary Morgan, and so do you. We use similar market survey techniques to survey the market. There's not much argument about these figures. Well, what do yours show? Ours show roughly the same. There's a very high proportion of young women smoking. It's of the order of Ruth's it, statement. Uh, yours don't the, differ The statement much. made earlier was incorrect. Uh, so, Hugh, I think we're missing that. the point. The question to ask is, why do children smoke? Why do people start smoking? Very good question. Is the question advertising? Clearly it's not. Now, the two Partly major studies and the most reputable studies that have been done have been done by the National Health and Medical Research Council, one in 1969 and one in 1979. The reasons? Parental smoking habits, peer pressure, socioeconomic They didn't ask where about children, where they, they did ask about advertising in 79, Nigel, I think you should read the report again. Where children spend their spare time, uh, peer pressure, they're the, they're the factors that are important. Advertising has not come up as a significant factor in this I think you're taking a very simplistic view of marketing here if you imagine that, that advertising doesn't appeal to 15 Why do children olds, smoke in does, countries where there's no I, advertising? It's, we're speaking about Australia here. I don't think we can apply to other groups at the moment. Let's just speak about Australia and look at the fact that there are all sorts of reasons that cause kids to smoke. We don't say for one minute that peer pressure isn't important, but when you have smoking, constant advertisements constantly bombarding children with smoking presented as a fun-filled, healthy activity, it's not surprising that it helps perpetuate the myth that smoking is a healthy, fun-filled well, activity. Put, let's put advertising in Which perspective. Is a myth. Firstly, advertising in Australia represents less than 2% of the total advertising expenditure on all commodities, so it's not this bombarding day after day after day. We're but not on you television. You have to walk through We're the street to have a look at the bombarding of adversity. Sure, there are outdoor Certainly posters. Certainly there, and what's more, they're not aimed directly at, at adults. Well, they're in places that children see as well. It's physically impossible. This everybody can see. It's physically impossible. Can, 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 I, can I pick up a point that Ruth raised earlier on, and that is the question of the targeting of women. One of your brands, Alpine, sponsored 15 pages of a report in this month's edition of Clio. Now, there are eight sponsorship references on the pages throughout the section. There are also four full-page Alpine advertisements. In each of those, there is a man and a woman, and yet in no case is the man showing smoking. Now, can you tell me that that really is not targeting women and trying to recruit them to smoke? I didn't say that we were not targeting women. I said we do not target people below the age of 18. No, I, 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 yes, I, I'm raising the question of whether you do target women and whether that constitutes such we will target adult uh, members of the adult population in in groups naturally that's uh, that's understandable we advertise in a particular magazine because it re reaches an adult audience we we a advertise in financial magazines because we know that that'll reach a segment of the business community and yet the reason i raise that is because it is argued that it is among young people and women that you see the best prospect for recruiting new smokers this is particularly sad when you look at the health consequences for women because over and above the health consequences for men, we do have the risks, the, the risks of oral contraception with smoking. We have new evidence on cervical cancer and a link with smoking. This is about the viral hypothesis. We have, the, I, uh, the, viral we have the, we have the other evidence on um, no. lower birth weight babies. And so here it's not only the woman that's affected, it's the child as well. So once again, the passive smoker, <laughs> the child becomes the victim. And, of course, we have the, uh, the evidence on miscarriage and complication at birth. Now, this is a very uh, an insidious form of marketing. Well, that's your perception. That's, a, that, that's that a perception, exactly, as John says. It's, it's a mean, perception what with you're very saying real consequences you're, you're, on very real people. You're levelling accusations based on statistical association. I'm actually speaking as a woman here on well, behalf of the Well, that's fine. You're speaking as a woman. Smoke. You're expressing an opinion. But, that, but 
because your opinion... I'm expressing medical opinion, and I'm, opinion, no, I'm medical expressing opinion. the opinion of the major medical no organizations throughout the world. No clinical research findings exist to support what you're saying. I don't think we find any difficulty in, in understanding that you don't agree about the quality of the evidence on either side. Mm -hmm. But it does seem to me that as an industry, you haven't really answered the criticism that you are targeting, targeting specific areas, that is youth and women, to replace the number of men who are stopping we smoking. We are ad targeting the adult population. The adult which smoking includes population. adult yeah. smoking population, which includes women. Can, I, can, I, can I raise with you an issue that's going to countries. come, that's going to be, well, it's already of, of importance for you in one state, it's going to be for, for you in the rest of, the, of Australia quite soon. And that is a new series of four warnings that are to be, to be uh, placed uh, on a rotational basis on cigarette packets. Can I, I'd like you to just give me a straight answer to each one of them. Do you agree with, with, with warning number one, smoking causes lung cancer? Do Certainly not. Agree. Smoking causes heart disease? Do not Certainly agree. not. Smoking reduces your life expectancy? Certainly not, and the Department of Health's own data doesn't support that, and I think it's important... Right, you disagree with the question I was totally asking, and the final one, yes. giving up smoking improves your health. Do not agree. You disagree with that? I don't think there's any evidence to support any of those contentions. Well, how are you going to live with your consciences pr uh, printing that on your packets as well? Because we're required to by the government, we don't agree with that approach. We, and we, and our, one of the requests that we've made of the health ministers is because we don't agree that they give attribution to those statements. Are you going to, are you going to pursue this matter through the courts? It's been, uh, suggested, it's been suggested the industry would like, to, would like to see the matter tested in court? We would prefer to resolve the matter through discussion with the health minister. Why? I would like why, to why, why, believe why, why, are you a more desirable course to go. Well, you mean, you, you mean tested the Australian Broadcasting Tribunal rulings in court? Well, that's, that, a, that's, that's a legitimate uh, right of every Australian that, business. Anybody well, can do that. Well, why can, I, can I put this point to you? There was a case in 1981 in the High Court in Perth involving a woman called Nancy Law. She was seeking compensation. Her husband had died from cancer. Uh, it was established in the court, or at least it was accepted by the court in evidence, that the cancer had been caused by, lungs, by, by cigarette smoking. Are you concerned that if you were to test this matter in court, that very precedent could be put on the court books? Well, firstly, Hugh, let me say that's not a precedent. That precedent relates to the repatriation Act, which the evidence reverse, was accepted in court in, by the in High relation court. to the Repatriation Act, which has a reverse onus of proof, which says if you cannot disprove that smoking had something to do with it, and we all know the controversy is such that we can't do that, then that's the that's the relevance of that evidence, and that was written up by David Solomon in the Fin Review at the time. Well, then why not take this matter through the courts and test it then? Well, we may well do so. I guess that's an option we're looking at. But at this stage, decisions haven't been taken, A, on what the warnings are, and B, uh, what warnings will go on the pack at the moment the matter is being tested by some health bureaucrats in Western Australia. Do you acknowledge that you're really being backed into a corner by legislation, taxation, and these sorts of requirements? I think we've certainly been uh, under the hammer for a long time, uh, and I think it's about time that Australia started to reassess just what they're doing to smoke. We've got a very dangerous principle being set here. We're suddenly saying, hey, smoking is no longer a personal decision. It's a government decision. And we've got the likes of Nigel saying we ought, to, we ought to engineer ways where people are forced to give up their personal habits. And I point, out, I point great, it out to you before I do it I again that he that. does not have a vested interest in the industry. He, has a, he certainly has and a I vested interest. And I haven't done interest. that. You have encouraged the taxation increases. Indeed, I have. And that is, a, that. Way of, that is a, way of, a form of social mm. engineering to try and stop people making their own personal decisions and make that decision to smoke or not a government mm. decision. I think it was government greed, but I did encourage mm. them, and I'm pleased well, your, that they Well, your recent the report is I'd like to make, further increase. I'd like to make a point about public health policy. Those warnings, I believe, those warnings are put on there, are going to be put on there by the government because the government believes them. But there is a cardinal principle of public health policy, and that is that if you want to put something on the market, the onus of proof is on you. And if you want to advertise something, the onus of proof is on you to prove that advertising doesn't recruit kids. Now, can you give me evidence that proves that advertising doesn't recruit kids? You simply cannot. Certainly. Look, report after report after report, public opinion from the same organisation that you use, Roy Morgan, shows that, that adults just don't believe. A, it recruits them if they're a non-smoker. Adults B, believe it recruits can be their moved children. about. Be it recruits their children. The viewers at home don't have the advantage of the statistics you're talking about, and they're extremely difficult to comprehend in the way you're arguing about them. We mentioned right. advertising a moment ago, and I want to pick that issue up with you now. Can you tell me what the difference is please, between a share plan promotion and an advertisement? There's no difference. Well, it's, why it's do you, what, seek, why do you seek in, in the March edition of Women's Weekly to call a four-page, I understand, $50,000 worth of advertising a share plan promotion? Because that's the way it was sold to us by the Women's Weekly or the Australian uh, the Kerry Packers organisation. They invited you to promote it that way? That's right. That, 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 in fact, is the fifth in a series of many. It's called the share plan promotion. 
It's effectively a long copy advertisement. What does it mean? It means an advertisement. It's, it's another, it's another synonym, a synonym for, for advertisement. It's, but it's, it's gone to the Advertising Council as, as, as being misrepresentative in the sense that it seeks to portray itself as, as an editorial piece of copy. Well, we were approached by the Women's Weekly. We uh, had, the, had the particular advertisement approved for the Australian Publishers Bureau. We had it approved by the uh, various other bodies in the Media Council. They accepted it as being a legitimate advertisement. Uh, in this instance, the, uh, the Advertising Standards Council said it's not, so obviously the next time we run it, we'll need a bigger banner across the top. That's the, that's the extent of the... Uh, Did they complaint. indicate to you why they, why they were seeking you out to place this material with them? The Women's Weekly? Yes. Well, like any organisation, uh, they're trying it's to make a profit. It's a controversial issue, and they wanted to bring it... Uh, the only reason the woman's weekly... an article in connection with it. And they were happy to take $50,000 from you while well, well, they did that? They're happy to take it from anyone who wants to advertise their point, provided it's a legal product and it adheres within the, uh, the self-regulatory process of advertising within Australia. Mm. Did you think it's strange that they should seek to promote it this way? Not at all. Why not? Well, it's a legitimate uh, point of view. We have a right to, uh, to have a say. We think it's a very important issue there that, that's being canvassed in the, uh, in the woman's weekly. It's a very good audience to talk to. Uh, about a very lots of kids. Issue. There are lots of kids in that audience, and you keep out of schools, but you go to kids through the Women's Weekly. Well, that's and not you know, promoting smoking. Well, it's read extensively by children. It's not promoting smoking. The yeah. That's a general obfuscation of advertisement. I do agree. Smoking. It was it was ruled by the Advertising Standards Council as a pro-smoking advertisement. I think you better reread the judgment. And I think in it fact, was ruled, it's being, it was I ruled by the ASC. It it's was ruled by the ASC on the grounds of the Code of Ethics it that it wasn't clearly identified yes. as an advertisement. And in their ruling, they, d they referred to it as the, as the pro-smoking advertisement. I understand also it's well, being re-adjudicated it on the grounds that it, it also contains misleading well, I think information. every advertisement that the tobacco industry puts out is being adjudicated on because of your consistent and persistent complaints. Because Obviously, you do concern. nothing more over there in Western Australia than churn out complaint after complaint after complaint. I think if, if you feel that's an appropriate role for ACOSH, then that's, that's fair enough. I, I would think that more but legitimate that's, that's, that's no be argument for people who put, who put matters of fact to you and who put matters of argument to you, simply to say that, you know, we have no, no reason to accord you credibility because all you do is creating complaints. Oh, I think we've got a legitimate right to have a say about a very controversial I'm issue. I'm not arguing that point. I'm, that arguing point. With, I'm arguing with your predisposition, as it seems to me, to label people who disagree with you as people who do nothing but complain. Well, I think we've got to look at the anti-smoking groups and try and break them down. We have a very legitimate scientific and medical community who we work with and contribute $4 million to research Which I would think I represent. Then we have a quasi-medical quasi group, including the, the likes of not Dr. Gray and the Hart Foundation, who have a very legitimate role, and I believe do it well, except they overstep the mark in the case of tobacco. Then we have what we call the rat baggery, and that includes groups like Bugger Up and Mop Up and ACOSH and ASH and a range it's, of other groups. I, I would just like range to of other groups so, uh, wait a moment. Tactics. Wait a moment. Ash, ASH, ASH is a group that is put there by the Cancer Council. Yes, well, it's well, sponsored well, by the National Heart let's, Foundation. Let's look, what, what is rat bag yes. about it? Well, look at the tactics. Last year, in 1983, uh, the director of ASH, or the director of ACOSH, and now the director of ASH was dragged before the Parliamentary Privileges Committee for false and misleading advertising. We have people persistingly to just complain against ad after ad after ad after ad that every tobacco company puts out. That to me is not legitimate. I, I don't eminently think worthy of complaints. Can, can realise that we in fact represent the Australian Medical Association. We represent the National Heart I'm Foundation. Well aware of that. We represent the major royal colleges of medicine, the surgeons, the physicians. To speak about these people as, as it's, rat bags. It's not who you is... represent. It's your tactics that I'm concerned about. Again, now let, let's look at look, another group, Bugger Up, who, who publicly face private and public property get their point across. You can't say that's a legitimate role. So you're speaking rat. about legitimate complaint through legitimate channels as being rat baggery, and when what we're in fact doing is protecting kids, we're trying to promote health, and this is rat baggery. I think you have a very legitimate role if you stuck with the objectives that you were given, and that is to promote health. And I think, the, the, as I said earlier, the Which key decision is informed adult decision. Now, I, I support the campaign, and publicly, in 1983, we came out and we supported the government's campaign to try and discourage children from smoking. We agree with that. We're on equal ground. There is some, some sharing but of, of views I, I'm there. I'm sorry, I can't accept that. You did everything you could to undermine the West Australian legislation. The one bit that was allowed any support at all was sale of cigarettes to, to children. children on the grounds that it was victim blaming, that is, that happened with kids, that you, you made the emphasis for kids not to buy cigarettes. You're here speaking about stopping kids from buying once they're motivated to buy. I can't believe that you would be supporting any health cause here when you stand up and publicly deny the evidence. Bill Webb, can I ask you a question? Is it true that, that your chairman, Bill Irvine, has given up smoking? I don't believe so. You're no. a smoker yourself? I am a smoker my, uh, myself. I'd, not... he I'd, he I'd heard that he had. 
Well, it's possible he has. Not everybody who works in the company actually smokes. It's, the, it's their choice whether they do or they don't. The only thing we insist on is if they do smoke, they smoke one of the company's brands. You're I happy think to that's comply. reasonable. You're happy to comply with I that? I enjoy part. smoking. I think it's one of life's pleasures. I enjoy smoking and I intend to continue. I actually think that the responsible policy makers in the tobacco industry should smoke a lot. I think that would be good for society. There's another point I'd like to put to you. It's been suggested Sounds to me... Sounds like you're getting slightly personal, Dr. Gray. I would suggest yes, that, that was you personal. devote a little more of your attention to responsible research rather than emotional diatribe. Emotional diatribe is very much the basis of advertising from tobacco companies. You're obviously going to disagree on fundamental issues right to the end, and that was fully expected, but I must thank the four of you for coming in, John Dollison, Bill Webb, mm. Ruth Sheehan, and Nigel Gray. I'll be back with another edition of Pressure Point next week, in which we'll be having a look at the role of public broadcasting in Australia. I hope you'll join me then, and until then, good night. <laughs>